Hi everybody, it's Reverend Kyle from St. John's uh, Grimsby, and um, we've uh, started a really fun uh, little project uh, with our uh, family gathering. Uh, last week we celebrated a very special holiday, well we made it up anyway, it was called Kids Giving, and uh, had a wonderful time celebrating really a kid-friendly Thanksgiving. And uh, if you missed uh, that, uh, that event, don't worry. There's still a really special way that you can contribute to the little project that we're doing. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, it was a little story that we talked about as well. And so the, the story uh, goes like this. And I want you to think for a second. Uh, have you ever felt sad before? What are some of the things that might, that might make you feel sad? Maybe someone has said something unkind to you or maybe someone has left you out saying well, you're too little to do this or you're too big to do that or um, maybe uh, maybe you've you've been hurt maybe your, your body is is sick or hurting or, or maybe uh, you've had your feelings hurt there's any number of reasons that we might feel sad and the story that we were talking about is found in our Bible it's a story uh, about Jesus and uh, in, uh, in his lifetime, Jesus helped a lot of people. He did some teaching, and he, he also helped people who were very sick. And um, there was a, there's a, a sickness, and it's called leprosy. And uh, leprosy is something where uh, it's a very painful sickness, uh, where it starts in your fingers and your toes and moves to your hands and your feet and, and, uh, and, and your muscles, and you get very weak if you have it, and you just don't feel very good. You're in a lot of pain, and you've got... Um, these these sores all over your body, and it's really uh, not not a, a pleasant thing to have. Uh, and in Jesus' time, uh, there was one day when when he was walking, and there were ten people with the leprosy sickness, and they heard about the things that Jesus was doing, and so they called out to him and in a loud voice uh, for them to to help. And they said, "Jesus, help us!" Um, and at that time. Uh, people with leprosy, they had to keep very far away uh, from, from other people. Uh, people thought that because they had leprosy that that meant that they were bad people or they weren't good people to, to be around, which is not true. Uh, but that's just how people understood it at that time. And so these people were in a lot of pain in their body, but also a lot of pain in their heart because they weren't allowed to be part of, of the community. Uh, and because of their sickness. And Jesus heard them calling, and, uh, and he turned to, to them, and they asked, please, please help us, please heal us, please make our bodies all better. And, uh, and Jesus said, yes, I, I will do that. Your faith has made you well. And he said, go and see the priest and show them that you're, you're healed, that your bodies are all better. And so they, they started to walk to go to see the priest, because at that time, the priest was the, the person that would decide on uh, who was allowed to be part of a community and who wasn't, who, who, were, who was in and who was out. And so if these people could show to the priest that they were no longer sick, then they could be part of the community. They didn't have to keep away from everybody else. Uh, and so on the way to the priest, they're, they're walking and they're realizing that, oh, you know, look, my, my hands are all better. They're not... Uh, they're not painful. I, I can feel my fingers. My feet are, are moving. I can walk and, and it doesn't hurt me to walk. I feel strong again. I don't have these um, these ouchy sores all over my body. And they're looking around at their friends and seeing the same thing. And they realize that, that Jesus made them all better, healed their bodies. One guy out of the group of 10 people, he decided to go back to see Jesus. And he, he walked back to see them, and he looked around to find him, and finally found him. And he said something very, very simple, but very special to Jesus. Do you know what he said? He said, thank you. Thank you for making me well. Thank you for making me healthy again. Uh, and Jesus said, oh, you are very welcome. Your faith has made you well. Uh, and so we, we hear in a very powerful way the importance of saying thank you. It's, it's always a good thing to say. It's always uh, a welcome message to hear when we can say thank you to somebody else. And so just like uh, that, uh, that one guy came back to find Jesus to say thank you, it's really important for us to say thank you uh, in, in our lives. There's lots of things we can be, be thankful for, of course. Uh, over Thanksgiving, we think about our 
our family, our friends, our school, the food we have to eat, the, the places we have uh, to live, and, uh, and all those wonderful things. But there's also things that sometimes we forget to be thankful for. And when we were together, we worked on this lovely gratitude chain. This is a great big chain. And each of these links on this chain, there's a, there's a certain thing in our community that, uh, that our kids have said that they are thankful for. And so you can see how, how long this chain is. It's taller than me. Um, of all the things that, that we're thankful for in, in our community. So, so some of the things, some of the groups of people that we're thankful for, uh, we said that we're thankful for firefighters, and we're thankful uh, for paramedics, for people who drive the ambulance. We're thankful for people who, uh, who drive the garbage truck and the recycle truck who pick up our garbage. We're thankful for the, the people who keep our parks nice and clean from the, from the town that do, uh, do their work. There's all kinds of wonderful groups of people that, that we're thankful for that we don't, we don't always think about. And it's important to be thankful uh, for, for people in organizations and, and workers and uh, who help to make our community a, a wonderful place to be. Some people decided that they wanted to be thankful for their coaches, for their sport coaches. Some are, are thankful for the teachers and for their neighbors. There's all kinds of, of, of folks that we can be thankful for. And so what I would like you to do uh, when you're at home in the next week or so is you can make your own gratitude chain and think about the people uh, and groups and things that make our community a special place that you would like to say thank you to. And make your chain, and uh, and when you come back to see us, uh, we'll add it to this chain, and we'll put it up as, as a decoration, um, and that will remind us of all of the things that we are thankful for. Uh, and so uh, what we want to do with this, too, is last time we were together, too, we talked about being a blessing, and a blessing... Uh, is, uh, is something that's uh, a gift that's, that's helpful and encouraging and, and, uh, and helps people remind that, that they're loved and they're cared for. Uh, and so just as God blesses us, we want to be a blessing too. And so when we think about the various groups uh, and organizations in our community that we want to be a blessing to, we'll, we'll look at your ideas and find the ones that, that we feel the strongest connection with. And we'll find a way in the coming months to, to give a blessing as a, as a family's group uh, to each of these groups in our community. So take some time, think about how you want to be thankful and who you're thankful for. Uh, make your chain and, uh, and bring it. Uh, and um, uh, what you can do is you can bring it to our gingerbread event, which is happening on November the 10th uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. And we are at the Livingston Activity Center in Grimsby. That's just a slight change in where we normally meet just for this month. Um, if you're coming, bring your gratitude chain and we'll add it to this and uh, We'll, we'll see how long we can make it, how, how long and deep our thankfulness goes. I am so thankful for each and every one of you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time.